Kathleen Karst, and I'm a nutritionist, a mom of three, uh, an author, and uh, the founder of Seelicious Omega-3, which you might have used in the past or tried. And uh, I recently, uh, last year, wrote a cookbook called This Kitchen is for Dancing. So I know that some of you may have a copy of that or have seen some of the recipes. So to say that I have a long and beautiful journey with health and food is really an understatement. And it's actually been uh, such an incredible part of my life to be able to work in the area of nutrition and wellness and also walk the talk. And I would say that it wasn't always this way. And maybe some of you have been on that path before. I think that many of us sort of uh, bump along in our health journey thinking that we're almost invincible until something happens. And I would say I was the same when I was in my early 20s. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. And so it's called mixed connective tissue disease. And it has uh, lots of different symptomology from pain and inflammation and uh, just overall feelings of fatigue and being unwell. And so I was put on a uh, drug, a prescription drug back at the time and found that I wasn't really feeling any better. And in fact, the drug had all kinds of different side effects. So that was really my wake up call to using nutrition and healthy living to heal my body. And I'm not sure I maybe would have made some of the changes that I did had I not had to go through um, that particular health challenge. And so that was really the beginning of my health journey. And even though I was a, a graduate from as a dietitian in 1999, I would say that going through my own personal health issue really is what got me motivated and passionate about changing my diet and changing my lifestyle and learning how to manage my stress. And I would say that it's a work in progress and that's really what health is. It's a journey and it's not something that has a real start and end point. I think that depending on what stage of life you're at, your needs and your body's requirements are, uh, are different. And so when I was in my 20s, it was really about nourishing my body with good fats, learning to eat more consistently, drink more water, incorporating more of an exercise, active lifestyle regime into that after being a student for so many years and um, struggling in just so many different ways from stress and not having enough money to really eat well. That was kind of where I was at at that time. And so that was one of the reasons why omega-3 fatty acids became such an important part of my journey was because we know that those good fats are so important for uh, decreasing inflammation and for really nourishing the body, especially during the low fat diet craze, which some of you probably lived to tell all about it when our grocery store shelves were lined with everything that said fat free low fat it was like if it had no fat that was considered to be healthy which we know thankfully now in 2020 it took us a long time to figure that out uh, but I would say over the last 10 years the importance of good fats has just continually been reiterated in both grocery store mainstream natural health and wellness and so I have um, loved incorporating more good fats and every single day my diet is rich in good fats. Avocados first thing in the morning and hemp seeds, uh, a spoonful of Seelicious Omega-3 every day, green leafy vegetables. We eat uh, wild fatty fish two to three times per week for sure. And um, of course, always a handful of nuts and seeds. So there's so many different ways in which I nourish my body with healthy fats. So that was kind of my priority when I was in my 20s is just refueling my body with those good fats to help deal with some of the inflammation. Then I would say that the, uh, the, the topic of the importance of protein became really fundamental in my early 30s after I became a mom. And I started to um, kind of have my second, I would say, blip in my health journey when I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue. It was like many of you have seen uh, after you have a new baby. I particularly had a challenging labor and delivery and a colicky, fussy baby and just found it such an overwhelming time for myself to be able to get enough rest and then feed myself, take care of my home and a baby, et cetera, et cetera. And I know maybe for some of you that was years and years ago, maybe some of you recognize that because you're living through that now. Um, but regardless, it did take a toll on my nutritional status. And uh, at the time when I was experiencing uh, symptoms 
symptoms of extreme fatigue that weren't even made better by rest. Uh, low blood sugar and real serious blood sugar swings in my day, cravings for sugar, um, dizziness, lightheaded. If I was laying down and I would go to get up quickly, I would feel um, very dizzy and my blood pressure would drop and I was also suffering from low blood pressure. And it was at that time I was introduced to my adrenal glands and how important they were and really how I had stressed them out and taxed them. So my husband, who is a naturopath, Dr. Gaetano Morello, he of course recognized the adrenal fatigue right away. And I um, ended up having a, a, a saliva test in order to determine my cortisol uh, rises and falls during the day. And I got on a really serious and supportive adrenal program with one of those nutrients being protein. And I had really no idea, even though I'd studied holistic nutrition and nutrition and wellness for the majority of my adult life, I just really didn't even make the connection between the importance of protein and helping our body deal with stress. And we know that those adrenal glands, which are our stress gland, um, produce a hormone called cortisol, but they have so many other jobs in our body. And one of them is to support blood sugar balance and blood sugar metabolism. So if you aren't feeding your body well enough, your adrenal glands have to take on all of that work to try to pump out sugar and produce sugar to keep you going. So I needed to give my adrenal glands a little bit of help. And so definitely incorporate more vitamin C because our adrenals burn a ton of antioxidants, uh, more B vitamins, which are our bodies, um, uh, help our body produce ATP, which is our energy currency that our body requires. Uh, I needed to really support my body with more vitamins, more minerals, and more protein. And as soon as I started to incorporate protein into my day, especially first thing in the morning, it was a real game changer for me. And I all of a sudden found that I wasn't craving um, sugar or um, you know baked goods at kind of nine o'clock in the morning following a more carbohydrate laden breakfast. I would usually be kind of starving and craving uh, sugar again very soon after. And I found that incorporating protein first thing in my, in my day was a real game changer for me. And it really helped to stabilize my blood sugar and it helped to support my adrenals. And it was a big part of my adrenal recovery. And uh, my son, my oldest, I have three children, but my oldest is 12 now and I've never looked back. And there's barely a day where I would miss incorporating a, a big serving like 20 grams of protein into my day. So I start my day with a protein smoothie every day. And when we get to the demo part of that, I'm going to talk about some more practical ways of which you can incorporate protein. And so what I think is amazing is that when I first started incorporating protein, it was a whey based, which there's nothing wrong, wrong with whey. Um, whey being a component of dairy proteins, whey and casein, but they typically produce protein powders from whey and whey protein isolates. And I thought it was really good. And I felt like it really helped my metabolism, helped my energy, helped balance my blood sugar. However, over the last um, eight years, I've made a tremendous switch in my diet to incorporating more plants. And this is when I was introduced to Veggie Day was about five years ago when I had my third Capri. And I was getting even more serious about minimizing animal-based uh, foods in our diet for a number of different reasons. And I had no intention of ever becoming a vegetarian or a vegan. It doesn't have to mean that. So if you're somebody who's making an effort for incorporating more plants into your diet, you don't have to label yourself. There's no guilt. There's no shame. If you want to enjoy a steak on a Sunday night with your family, it's grilling season, maybe you want to grill chicken. For me, it was more about just making an effort to support my overall health and incorporating more of those plants because we know that there's just endless amount of benefit for both the environment, um, for ethical reasons, for sustainability, and for our own health. And we've seen that time and time again with research studies continually looking at populations that consume a very plant-heavy diet and the lack of disease that they have in comparison to those 
cultures or um, countries that consume more meat-based products. And so there's just a tremendous amount of benefit to incorporating more plants into your diet. So I would say about five years ago is when I got really more interested in trying to adopt a more plant-based lifestyle. And a really easy switch for me was to switch to a plant-based protein. It seems easy, but oftentimes it's not because we know that a lot of plant-based proteins can provide a lot of gas and kind of bloating um, based on if they're made from soy or if your body doesn't digest some of those plant proteins well, such as pea protein. Some people have trouble with that. So it took a little bit of trial and error, not to mention they were kind of like gritty. I didn't find that a lot of them gave a nice flavor profile, even if I was mixing them in with other things in my blender. Um, and so I kind of went on a quest to find what I would say is the perfect plant-based protein. And so luckily I am in this business, so I get all kinds of um, amazing products sent to me and I attend trade shows and um, seminars all over the world and have the opportunity to kind of go booth by booth and sample out. And when I was introduced to Vegaday and I started using it in my diet, I would say within three months, I was just completely uh, hooked on it. And uh, I wanted to work more with the Vegaday brand because I really believe in it. And it's something that I found to be uh, really beneficial for my own diet. And it's something that I even incorporate into my children's diet. So um, I love Vegaday. And that was one of the reasons why I was excited to share uh, some of the reasons why we all need to start incorporating more plants into our day and how you can actually use plant protein in some more fun and practical ways. So I would say that making a smoothie or just like mixing it with water is probably the easiest and the simplest way to do it. I recommend that everybody start their day with at least 20 grams of protein first thing in the morning. And we know that protein comes in so many different foods, whether it's whole grains, oats, legumes, nuts, seeds, like chia or hemp seeds. Um, I'm just looking over, I have a display set up, I'm gonna show it to you uh, afterwards from eggs and hard cheese and Greek yogurt. And there's just an endless amount of amazing nourishing foods that are rich in protein. And what I think is also interesting is not only are those foods rich in protein, but they're also rich in fiber. And we know that the fiber component of the story is really important for your gut and your digestive health. So if there's one thing that you will learn along your wellness journey is that the entire body is connected to each other. So every system works with each other. And so while we're supporting our, uh, our, our macronutrient intake in our diet in order to support muscle and metabolism and blood sugar, adrenal glands, immunity, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about immunity, um, your gut is also part of that equation and part of that story. So I love incorporating some of these plant proteins and plant foods that can and work and support our body in so many different ways. So it's just really fun. And I've also had a lot of fun throughout uh, the production of my cookbook and all the recipes that I created and tested and tried. And um, I found it's actually quite easy to start incorporating more plants into the diet. And I think the year that I was recipe testing for my cookbook, my kids have never eaten so many chickpeas and lentils in their life because I was putting it in everything from soups and curries and uh, you name it, we were eating it. And it just became really fun and it became a, just a great kind of component of our life. And we went from a meatless Monday sort of family to three times a week eating plant-based meals to now I would say personally myself, my kids would eat more um, animal-based foods than I do. Um, but we feel really lucky that we've been able to improve our diet by eating more plants. So let's talk a little bit uh, more specifically about the Veggie Day plant protein um, because this is actually what I would think is a simple and easy way to incorporate more plants into the diet. Having a scoop of protein, which gives you 20 grams of protein into each serving is such a simple and convenient way to do it. And so I think if you haven't been um, eating a lot of protein in your diet, now's the time to really take a look. 
And the best way to do that is to keep a food journal for about a week. And I always recommend people to write down everything that you're eating and drinking. Just keep it to yourself. And if you've had a chocolate bar in there or a bag of chips, write that down as well. There's no shame in guilt or food. And I really don't believe there's such a thing as a good food or a bad food. It's just, we want to always make the trend to improving and you should never deprive yourself, but also be realistic that you know that food fuels health and wellness. And that is within our control and nobody is going to do that for you. So the onus is in you and on your plate. And so eating more protein or enough protein to support your needs is important. So each person, each of us needs about 0.8, I would say about a gram per pound of body weight or per kilogram of body weight, sorry. So if you're 75 kilograms, you need about 75 grams of protein per day. So as a reference point, an egg has six grams. And I know an egg is not a plant protein, but as a reference, I always think that that's an easy one to go with. So if you need 75 grams and an egg has six grams, you can kind of do the math in terms of how much you're actually going to need to be consuming. So this is one of the reasons why I love uh, protein powders is that first thing in the morning, I take a scoop into my blender and I have 20 grams right there. So right out of the gate, first thing in the morning, I'm supporting my body's energy, stress, adrenal glands, immunity with protein. And I love that. And if I continually add to that blender, uh, leafy green vegetables, maybe an additional serving of hemp seeds, I can easily get up to 30 grams of protein, no problem, first thing in the morning. And then every time you eat, you need to have protein on your plate. So always keep that um, in mind. So eating sufficient plant protein is really important. And remember, protein is one of those macronutrients that the body needs. They're considered to be essential, meaning that the uh, body can't make them. So it has to get them from our diet. And in order to get them from the diet, you actually have to make an effort to plan and to ensure that the foods that you're choosing give you enough of the protein. So some of those benefits, I have them written on the screen and I know you guys can see the screen, but stabilizing appetite, and that's such a big one. It helps provide feelings of satiety along with fibrous foods. So like I said, mother nature is so smart and that we know many foods contain both protein and fiber together. So you're kind of getting a one-two punch when you eat um, some of those beautiful plants that contain both. And they really will do an amazing job. So you could do a little test yourself. At breakfast, have a piece of toast with jam on it or have a, a protein smoothie or eggs and toast. And you will be able to tell the difference within two hours with how you're feeling. Those of us who have been tea and toast kind of breakfast eaters know that we're usually craving food and craving more carbohydrates within about 90 minutes because that's our blood, our blood sugar's normal curve is to rise and fall about every um, 90 minutes to two hours. So if you are uh, feeling like you have cravings for sugar, that's one of the reasons. Also, so many of us do have um, adrenal stress. You know, we we had a little blip in our technology today. We love it and hate it. And I moved into a different room to hopefully help this connectivity. I think too many people are Zooming today. Okay, as I was saying, so the benefits, of course, so stabilizing appetite. And you can try this yourself at home if you're somebody who's um, had cravings for sugar or carbohydrate in particular, try incorporating more protein at breakfast and see if this helps. Uh, protein traditionally has been known for strength and muscle mass, which I, I have to say even myself, I had this misconception when I was in my 20s that if I ate more protein, I was gonna get big muscles, which is not the case at all. And uh, yes, it does help support metabolism and lean muscle mass, but that's actually a really good thing. And it's not gonna make you bulk up, especially at the one gram per uh, kilogram of body weight. You would need to eat significantly more. Um, elite athletes who are lifting a lot of weights are probably eating closer to two to two and a half, maybe even three grams per kilogram of body weight. So at the one gram mark, that's definitely not gonna be uh, a question. It will help your body to burn burn fat. So that's a good thing so that we're not hanging on to the wrong kinds of fat, especially in the, in the stomach area. Of course, we know that protein is important for bone strength and healthy brain function. Uh, skin, hair, and nails, of course, is extremely important for. And honestly, immunity. And maybe this is not something that we um, uh, have thought so much about in the past until we have been faced with really taking a look inwards and figuring out what makes us well. 
what makes us healthy? What do we need to do to keep our immune system strong? And maybe the term boost immunity isn't the right um, way to describe it, but definitely supportive nutrients. And this year in 2020, we've heard all about introducing more vitamin C and taking a quality multi, uh, more zinc, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D for immune health, and all of those nutrients are going to be very supportive for the immune system and help your body to fight infection and help your cells to repair and recover. However, let's not underestimate the power of protein because protein is what helps your body to produce those antibodies. And those antibodies, in particular IgG, which is our body's most um, abundant immune globulin, is what actually helps to be and defend against incoming bacteria and viruses and pathogens. And the only way our body can really make more is to incorporate more protein into uh, the diet. So we have seen this continually that people who get sick and get um, colds and flus more often than others tend to have quite a low protein diet. So a high quality protein is going to be uh, an incredibly important component of your overall wellness uh, program, if you will. And again, this can be as done as easily as incorporating more plant protein in the form of a supplement to really making a conscious effort to every time you sit down to eat, are you having sufficient protein at that meal? aiming for your recommended 0.8 grams to one gram per kilogram of body weight, really trying to mix it up. Remember, those amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And uh, we want to make sure that we've got a balanced variety of those in our, in our diet in order to help our body produce proper, um, in proper antibodies. So our body really does require a daily, uh, a daily supply of protein and uh, amino acids because it's not something that it can make itself. And protein is essential, you guys, we can't live without it. So if you have not been focusing on protein, it start incorporating more and it will help your body to um, better deal with uh, viral and bacterial infections and just overall a sense of wellness and health. So some really important benefits of protein that I think get often overlooked uh, in our, our diet and with our health. So often I think we're more consumed and concerned about heart disease risk, rightfully so, and our risk of breast cancer and our risk of other serious chronic diseases that we know to be the number one killer in our country. However, taking some of those basic nutrients and basic macronutrients that our body needs to live well should be a strategy that we do every day. Then you tailor your supplement regime or your health regime to what are your issues. Is it adrenal fatigue? Okay, then you need to be on a more supportive adrenal program. Is it eczema? Then you need to support your body with more um, nutrients that are good for reducing uh, skin inflammation and redness. Is it heart disease? Then perhaps you're going to look at more healthy fats, more omega-3 fish oils, coenzyme Q10. So there's all kinds of different ways that from a holistic and wellness perspective, we can tailor our diet and our and our nutrients that we're supplementing with in order to help us live well and feel our best. So when you're looking at your plate, this is Canada's food guide that was relaunched last year, I think it was 2019. And we know that having more fruits and vegetables, which lots of those fruits and vegetables actually have protein in them, and then really making sure that you've got a solid amount of protein foods in your diet from various sources, whether that's fish and eggs, red lentils, chickpeas, green lentils, hemp seeds, chia seeds. There are just an, a wide variety of foods that you can incorporate into your um, plate that will help to nourish yourself. So the, some of the reasons I kind of mentioned this already, but I love plant-based proteins, not that I'm going to become vegetarian or vegan. And remember, you don't have to label yourself as such. You can just make a effort to every day incorporate more plant protein into the diet. And there's just so many, like I said, ethical and environmental reasons. Um, and if only we just even look at one small perspective as 
to how much less energy it consumes and how much more gentle it is on the environment. And remember, planting seeds just requires water and some sunshine. And gosh, I live in Vancouver and have we ever had a lot of rain lately? Um, not enough sun. So my little garden that I planted in garden block boxes this year is part of an experiment um, and just for a fun family activity to do. Uh, we need more sunshine to really help these plants thrive. So come on, sun, we can do it. But uh, we know that animal protein uses far more resources and energy in order to produce animal-based products. So there's so many good environmental reasons. And not to mention from a cost perspective, eating plants is relatively inexpensive in comparison to eating animal-based foods, um, especially meat. So there are some cost savings and affordability component to eating more plants in the diet um, as well. Uh, so I think I mentioned all of this, of course, the environmental digestibility um, is great as well. And we know that digestive issues are the number one reason why people visit their doctor, gas, bloating, indigestion, acid reflux, um, which of course stress has a big component in that. And just overall um, feeling of unwell with our digestion. So if you haven't taken a look at your digestion, do so. And like I talked about keeping a food journal, keep a digestive journal. How often do you eliminate? How often do you go to the bathroom? After you eat, do you feel bloated? At five o'clock in the afternoon, does your stomach look like it's five or six months pregnant? These are all really important things to know about yourself. And I can't know that about you and not even your doctor really knows that about you. So you need to take inventory of you in terms of how everything is working and your food and your digestion really go hand in hand. So there's a numerous different things. And we know that when we incorporate more plants into our diet, more green leafy vegetables, um, more nuts and seeds, more plant foods, and you find the ones that your body can digest and digest well, you will see an improvement in uh, your body's overall digestive function. And part of that is because of the ability of those foods to really um, nourish the microbiome and create those really happy and healthy bacteria that live within your large intestinal tract and live within your microbiome that goes all the way from your mouth all the way down into your um, large intestinal tract and use your colon. So we want to populate that with as happy and healthy bacteria as we can. We've also found that when people start to incorporate more plants into their diet, it actually improves their stress for many reasons and their mood. And again, that has to do with those plant plant. Uh, food contain a lot of good bacteria that connect and speak directly to your brain. So there's this vagus nerve connection that goes from your gut into your brain and it helps to support mood and your gut actually releases more serotonin, which is your body's feel good hormones and chemical than your brain does. So nourishing your gut well with plants will make um, uh, your mood and your overall ability to cope with stress a lot easier. So a few of the Vegeta products, there are uh, shakes, so in different flavors. So we've got, uh, there's two different types with Vegeta. There's the plant-based protein just on its own, and it actually comes in four, four or five different flavors. So there's an unflavored vanilla strawberry chocolate and a newly released uh, uh, spring blossom, which is like a peach delicious. Uh, honestly, it's my absolute favorite. And I'm going to show you how I incorporate that into a smoothie today. And then there's also the all in one, which incorporates the plant based raw proteins along with vitamins, minerals, greens, and fiber. So you're getting more of a complete of which in the all in one, you wouldn't probably in your blender, as an example, need to add much more. You can, but it wouldn't be necessary because you're all, you are already getting uh, a lot of extra nutrients in the all in one. So the um, protein is the uh, regular plant based protein. It's a blend of uh, rice, uh, brown rice, pea, chia, quinoa, spirulina, and chlorella. It's sweetened with an organic stevia. These um, plants are, I find, very easy to digest. There's no soy, which for me, soy is actually one of my trouble nutrients that I have a hard time digesting, but not everybody is that way. So if you have found benefit with that, then that is amazing. And I always say, go with what works for you. 
So this is something that I find works really well with my body and I find it really easy to incorporate. Um, in terms of flavor, the French vanilla is really simple to incorporate and it sort of goes across the gamut and I've used it in everything from energy balls and protein pancakes and smoothies and popsicles. But there are times where you might want to have a different, a bit of a different flavor. Maybe you're a berry lover and you want your smoothies to be more about berries. So the strawberry might work good or maybe you're that chocolate person and uh, getting that kind of decadent chocolate works really well for you. So each scoop has 20 grams of protein, which is kind of exactly what we need at um, breakfast time in particular or per serving. So if you are getting that 20 grams in one scoop, this will do a really beautiful job of supporting digestion, immunity, adrenal glands, uh, appetite, stress levels, blood sugar metabolism. I think the 20 grams is kind of like right on and you'll actually notice that most protein brands are trying to aim for that 20 grams of protein per uh, per serving. So I find this very easy to mix. I do use a blender. Um, I, and I'll show you this, but I, um, I use a high powered blender called a Vitamix. My husband uses just a, a really simple, inexpensive magic bullet. He loves that because he finds it so easy to clean. He loves that the blade comes off. Any kind of blender is going to really work when you're doing uh, vegetate protein. Ask yourself the question, and I'll talk a little bit more about this before everybody starts trying to uh, invest in high-powered blenders. It really depends on what you're using it for. You don't need it. There are so many different, uh, really, really capable blenders on the market that if you don't, you don't need to spend seven or eight hundred dollars to be able to make smoothies if that's what you're doing with it. I use it for my work. I create recipes. I make soups and flour and nut butters. So if that's you then it might be worth investing in a blender that can actually take whole celery and, and carrots and everything and blend it down, or it can take almonds and blend it into flour. So it really just depends on what you're doing. But I just happen to love Vegetate in a smoothie first thing in the morning, and I'm gonna show you how I make that uh, along with some of the other um, uh, ways that I incorporate veggie. Uh, veggie day into our diet here in our house. Uh, so just I'm going to scroll through these because these are just other um, flavors. So the flavors, uh, the, the formula is the same throughout. It's just the flavor profile that's a little bit different. So that's kind of the only thing that you need to be um, aware of. They're all considered to be vegan. They're considered to be raw, super clean, no fillers, no additives, um, really, really high quality nutrition, blends well, doesn't give you that gritty sort of aftertaste. And I also find it really easy to digest. So that's kind of um, one of the reasons why I started to like Veggie Day because I didn't um, feel comfortable with that sort of gas and bloating that is common after plant-based proteins. So I just find this a really easy one and my kids love it as well. And I get asked a lot, is it safe for kids to eat protein powders? And the answer is yes, I actually incorporate a protein powder. Do they need as much as we do? No, because remember the recommendation for protein is really based on uh, your body weight. So if I'm making a blender and I put a whole scoop in, that would pretty much feed three kids. So it's not um, the same requirements as what we are, but I do try with my kids every time they eat that they are having some protein uh, with that, with their meals. So um, it just really depends, but it is absolutely safe and appropriate for children. It's sweetened with stevia, which sweet stevia is a really appropriate sweetener for uh, kids and adults and anyone with um, blood sugar abnormalities or type two diabetes, as an example, uh, it provides no calories. So it's just a really easy and um, healthy sweetener to incorporate into your diet. And um, I think I already talked a little bit about this. I like to have slides for you guys just so that you you have something to look at, um, but I tend to just talk a lot. Okay, so when you're looking at what other nutrients do you need, definitely what I would consider foundational nutrients are uh, a good quality multivitamin, vitamin D3 every day, and I recommend about 25 IUs per um, uh, pound of body weight. Uh, yeah. 25 IUs per pound of body weight or per kilogram of body, per pound of body weight. Oh my goodness. Uh, my mind, because my daughter walked in, so my mind gets uh, distracted. Omega-3 fatty acids are foundational nutrients as well. We need about 1500 milligrams of omega-3 per day. So that's kind of what I recommend is a pl good place to start. And then from there, as I mentioned, we're going to tailor your needs depending on 
what your health issues are. If it's general health and wellness and just keeping your body strong and healthy, that's all you need. You don't really need much else other than that. So if you're looking for a more all-in-one shake that's going to give you a little bit more fiber, maybe a little bit more, uh, slightly more protein, more antioxidants, which we know to be important, then you would consider the all-in-one versus the regular protein. And uh, the all-in-one, again, very, very similar taste, uh, very similar mouthfeel and texture. This one, I would say, depends on what you're eating. If you kind of know that the only thing you're doing that's good for your health is that breakfast smoothie that you maybe take while you're running out the door on your way to work or school or whatever it is you're doing, then the all-in-one is probably the right choice, especially if you're not really supplementing or incorporating any other uh, vitamins or minerals or nutrients into your, into your diet, then the all-in-one might be a really good choice for you because you are going to be getting a little bit more nutrition than you will be with the regular veggie day. But it's really all depends on what your diet is like and what you feel, um, what you feel like you need and how you're using it. If you're using it as a full meal replacement, then maybe the all-in-one would be um, more, more appropriate for you. So these would be some of the considerations, uh, low dietary intake. I know sometimes with my kids, they don't eat well at all. So I feel like if it's breakfast, um, then I know that they're getting a good amount of healthy nourishment into their breakfast. Some days they eat everything and some days they say they like nothing. So I don't know. And if you find yourself the same way, then an, an all-in-one that gives you a more broad range of nutrients might be a really good idea. Again, if you're somebody who's replacing a full meal, that might be a really good idea. So you're going to get 21 grams of protein and two grams of fiber. Same type of protein as the veg day. Uh, it's just the differences with the all-in-one. There's greens that are actually harvested from their own farms that they have in Armstrong, BC. And these farms are so beautiful. They're all organic. Everything's harvested fresh. There's no drying um, or dehydrating there. It is honestly, if you ever get the opportunity, and sometimes they do do tours, it's one of the most beautiful, beautiful farms that I've ever seen in my life. And I was literally jaw dropped open with my camera taking pictures of everything. It's just literally stunning. You should see their echinacea fields. They're honestly, it's so beautiful. And so they harvest all their greens for veggie day from their farm. So it's real beautiful. This is a Canadian, Canadian company, family owned, and um, just people who have been basically dedicated their entire life to producing healthy, um, healthy vitamins, healthy, healthy wellness products. So uh, it's always a pleasure to work with people who care so much about everything from what's planted to what's harvested and then what's manufactured. So that's one of the other things that I love about the Veggie Day. Okay, so that's kind of the, uh, again, three different flavors. There's the strawberry, there's the vanilla, and I believe there's an unflavored in the all-in-one as well. And um, that I think was the main, those are the main things that I wanted to mention. Um, some of the quality seals, which actually are important. So when you're shopping in health food stores, you know that the majority of the products there are certified. They've got NPN numbers. They've been, if they say they're organic, they're certified organic, they're non-GMO. Um, there's so many different quality parameters that one should be looking for. One of the ones that I have become familiar with over mm, maybe the last five years is something called Asura. And um, Asura is a secondary testing, um, basically certification that looks at whether it's contaminant free, whether it's accurately labeled. So what is on the bottle is actually in the bottle, which is really important because you would be surprised how often that happens, that the product is non-GMO compliant. And it basically just has an extra level of testing over what Health Canada requires. So looking for these Aishura symbols are um, kind of a great measure to help you feel more confident with what it is that you're bringing into your home and what you're giving to your family and uh, what you're incorporating into your diet. So I want to now take uh, the opportunity to show you some of the ways that I incorporate Veg Day into my diet. And so I'm actually going to end this show and I'm going to transfer over to the kitchen and set it up on my iPhone so that I can do a little bit of a demo and uh, kind of show you some creative and unique ways that you might be able to incorporate Veg Day into your life. So I'm going to end the show and then I will uh, rejoin and restart um, over in my kitchen. So I will see you there.
All right. Okay. So welcome to my kitchen, everyone. This is like part two of our veggie day and the importance of incorporating more plants into your diet and in particular more plant proteins, uh, which is really important and can actually be a little bit challenging for people in their diet. So um, this is one of the ways where I found it a little bit easier to get more protein into my day is when I started to put a scoop of plant protein into my blender. And I just got into the habit. And I think that this is what it's really about is habits. It's something that you do over and over again that it just starts to feel second nature. And now I don't even think about it. There's barely a day that goes by where I don't make a protein smoothie first thing in the morning or if I haven't had one in the morning because I've decided to eat um, some nice steel cut oats or maybe I've made eggs then I will have a protein smoothie maybe mid-afternoon. So mid-afternoon actually tends to be one of my lulls in terms of my own health and my own uh, nutrient needs. So I try to have a fairly substantial protein uh, snack or food mid-afternoon around two o'clock. And I find that that really helps to minimize my cravings. And uh, instead of eating a bag of chips while I'm cooking dinner, I actually feel good and like I can make it through until the food is ready. So I wanted to show you a few different ways in which you can incorporate a veg day into your day. So yes, we know uh, a smoothie, and I am gonna show you kind of just a really quick and simple smoothie that I like to make of which I can also freeze and turn it into popsicles, which you can do with basically any leftover smoothie. Maybe you've made too much, or maybe you're just making it in order to make it into popsicles, which is kind of a fun treat, especially if you're feeding kids all summer. And um, if it's hot, think about it, you would feel actually good about giving them a popsicle in the morning and they would just feel like this is the greatest treat in the world, especially if there is extra protein in it. So we know it's not gonna send them kind of crazy uh, with extra sugar and artificial colors and flavors. So anytime you can make something yourself, it of course is better. So I wanna start off though by making um, some energy balls, energy bites, and the recipe for this is in my cookbook, This Kitchen is for Dancing. There's a number of different ways that you can make energy balls. And, um, and, and honestly, so many different ingredients can be used. But this one I particularly like, I think it tastes really great. And you can choose to use uh, a chocolate protein, an unflavored, the vanilla would also be really great with this kind of combination that I'm gonna use. And so really whatever you have at home that can be for protein powder, that can be incorporated into it. So you're probably wondering why would I want to put protein powder into my energy bites? Because it just gives you another opportunity to incorporate more of this good protein. And these uh, energy bites are actually really protein rich because I'm using a combination of walnuts and pecans. I'm going to put sunflower seeds in them as well so that um, you're getting loads of plant protein and fiber. So there's um, just a whole, a, a number of different things going on that are going to continue to add. And then when you add in the 20 grams of protein from the veggie day, it just that makes them even more nourishing. So that every bite you take is actually delivering really good quality nutrition. So in order to sweeten these energy balls, you can use honey, you can use maple syrup. I'm gonna use dates because I think that dates give kind of a nice sticky texture to the energy balls. So for this particular recipe, I make it's about like 12 to 14, depending on how big you make them. I put 12 pitted dates. So if you're buying dates that contain the pits, you want to just um, open them up and inside the middle there will be a little pit, just take them out. I tend to buy ones that are already pitted. I um, buy them either in the bulk bin, um, in a large bag because I go through uh, so many of them, but you can easily take them out. If your dates have become a little bit hard, you can just put them in some warm water and let them soften a little bit, let them soak. And sometimes that's a really good idea, especially when you're putting it through a processor, it might uh, help with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a cup of walnuts. So walnuts, think about it, it's kind of neat. They look like little brains. And we know walnuts are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, so they're really supportive for brain health and they contain a significant amount of protein. They're an amazing nut to snack on and you will feel actually very satisfied after um, uh, eating walnuts because they really do a great job of stabilizing blood sugar. I'm gonna use pecans, but you could use uh, cashews would be a really nice choice as well. And um, I'm gonna put sunflower seeds. 
In the cookbook, I actually call for uh, pumpkin seeds, but I actually ran out and I didn't realize that until I was setting this up. And I'm gonna use coconut, which coconut flakes are pretty much a staple component of um, any of the energy balls that I make. I just kind of like it. You can also leave a little bit of coconut if you wanted to roll the balls into after you um, made them, they sort of look nice, or you could roll them in oats or cacao nibs if you wanted to, completely optional. I've also, um, once they're rolled, rolled them through chopped pistachios, which is another really great way. Um, in the recipe book, I call for goji berries, but you could use uh, cranberries, ch dried cherries, kind of any dried fruit, um, or you can use chocolate chips, which my kids really like. So I'm gonna add those chocolate chips, which they're gonna be pretty excited about that. And uh, I put a little bit of coconut oil in, just to help um, make it smooth and add a little bit more of that oil. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, which gives it a nice taste. And I am going to use the chocolate veg day. So, open this up. Now, you could add as much or as little as you want. If you don't want a full scoop, don't put a full scoop. If you want to try it out, use half a scoop this time, or you want to um, even do more because you know that you can tolerate it, uh, go for it. And again, you could use vanilla, you could use unflavored, so I'm just gonna put an entire scoop of protein, so it's an extra 20 grams right there. And the chocolate smells so good, it's really, really nice. So if you're looking to try something new, that might be the one. And I'm gonna add a little pinch, I'm about to get it out, I'm gonna add a little pinch of uh, sea salt because sea salt just helps to tie all those flavors together. Um, don't worry really about your salt intake. It's like we've learned a lot about sodium in our food, especially if you're making all your food yourself. If you're eating a very packaged processed diet, that's a different story. But um, if you're cooking everything yourself, honestly, you don't have to worry as much. So I'm going to turn my food presser off, processor on. And it just needs a couple of minutes. So I will go ahead and do that here. And I'm just going to it up. Let those nuts kind of go down a little bit. And And we can take a look, scrape down the sides if you want. And you want to blend until kind of sticky and for sure until all those nuts are broken down. It looks beautiful, smells beautiful. Um, I could maybe use a little bit more coconut oil. Mm, the taste is amazing. And trust me, you don't even know that I put like a protein powder in there. The taste is beautiful. So I'm just gonna scrape that down. I'm gonna put the lid back on. Let it blend a few more minutes. Then you have the basis of your, and I'm going to come into view so I can show you. You have the basis of your energy balls right there. Amazing. You've got chocolate, nut, seed, energy bites. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to simply roll them. And I usually just take a cookie scoop. This is a number 40 size, but you could use any size really that you want. 
Um, you can line up a tray with parchment paper so it doesn't stick. And I just usually scoop it up and I just gently form it into a ball. And again, this is where you could choose to run these through um, shredded coconut, chopped pistachios. You could um, put a few more chocolate chips. Maybe you want to run them through hemp seeds. Uh, there's so many different ways that you could do that. So you're just going to gently form them into a ball. And when they're all done, you are going to put them in the refrigerator so they have an opportunity to sit a little bit because they're kind of soft when you first make that. No matter what energy bites you're making, I've got quite a few recipes in the cookbook, you are going to put them in the fridge to um, help them form maybe for half an hour. And it just helps to make them a little bit more solid. So you've got really yummy snacks for the kids, for yourself. And this is actually, I find these kind of energy bites to be a really good uh, grab and go sort of snack. I love these. And also great for the kids' sports, um, bring the car with you. You don't need to even buy uh, store-bought granola bars. You can make them smaller, however you kind of want to make them. And that's how you got it. So that's one of the fun ways to do it, to incorporate Vegetate. And like I said, there is no, you would never know that you put a scoop of protein powder into these. They don't look different, they don't taste different. Anything, it only enhances the, um, of course the nutrition, but the chocolate component. So I did put chocolate chips in there, which is why they're a little bit more brown. Um, but think about it, these are vegan, uh, beautiful snacks because even the chocolate chips are good. So that's a super easy way to make uh, really healthy energy bites. I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to wash my hands quickly. All right, now I'm going to show you kind of a quick and simple smoothie that I make basically every day. Sorry, I'm walking away from you guys while I'm still talking. Uh, basically, I make, like I said, a smoothie every day. So I'm going to use my uh, Vitamix for this, but you can use any high-powered blender you want. I have almond milk put in here. Again, any type of beverage will really work. I mean, I, because I'm making a uh, a vegan smoothie, I tend to not use animal dairy in here, but you could, if that's what you like and that's what you're comfortable with and what your family enjoys, you can go ahead and uh, use that. Oat milk tastes great. Coconut milk is delicious. I, if I'm using coconut milk, I usually use the canned coconut milk. I buy the full fat one and you can just thin it out yourself if you want because that fat from the coconuts is really nourishing for your body and it's really great for energy and metabolism. So I've got maybe this would be like one to two servings um, of almond milk here in my blender. Pretty much always add a banana. You can add a frozen banana if you have a high power blender. Regular banana might have a little bit more of a, a difficult time blending if it's frozen, especially if you haven't chopped it into small pieces. So I love banana for the creaminess, kind of adds a little bit of sweetness, makes it smooth and adds a little bit of uh, bulk and texture to the smoothie. So I pretty much put banana in every single smoothie that I'm making because I just really, really like it. Uh, I also add greens. So every smoothie I make, even if I'm doing the all-in-one, I add greens. And fun story, um, I do either baby spinach or kale, usually. And I mentioned during my presentation I've been growing a garden. So this morning, I actually went out and picked kale leaves from my garden, which to me is just so such. <laughs> so this is a type of um, Tuscan kale. My in-laws are from Italy, and they grow this beautiful garden. They have such green thumbs. And they grow this particular Tuscan Italian lacinato kale. And so I used some of the seeds that they use. And um, kale is such a hearty vegetable outside of the slugs that are currently eating at my kale. Uh, it will last all winter. I mean, I was picking kale in my father-in-law's garden all winter long. So the backbone or the rib of the kale, I usually just pull the leaf from it, but you don't, you don't have to. 
um, you can you can put the whole thing in, no problem. Just a little bit tougher to digest uh, for your digestive system, but if you've got really solid digestion and you've got a little high power blender, you don't even have to worry about that. If you're buying the curly kale, you probably don't need to worry about that because it'll likely already be um, shredded. So there's my greens, always greens, always a banana, uh, my non-dairy milk, and then the other thing I add in this blend is frozen diced avocado. I grab my freezer here. So I love it. You, know, you can buy, you can put a fresh avocado in here. I just really like frozen because it makes the smoothie a little bit more frosty and cold. And because I'm not using any frozen fruit in here, this sort of takes the place of it. So there's not a day that goes by that I don't need avocado. I love it. So good for your skincare and nails and um brain health avocado is just an amazing fruit and they're amazing fruit fat and so i buy this bag of diced avocados and i absolutely love it so i'm just going to kind of it. the more you the more frozen and, and, and thick and creamy you like it the more avocado you have so it's kind of like well we can come back to the but like i said you could add fresh avocado as well uh, I am going to add this new Veggie Day all-in-one, which is the new flavor that they have a limited release on. And it's so good, and the smell of it is delicious. And I think it's peach orange blossom. But mm, it smells like summer <laughs> to me. And so there's like so many different combinations that you can incorporate with this protein. You could put uh, frozen peaches and mangoes and pineapples, anything tropical tastes really good with it. I tend to keep my smoothie first thing in the morning, fairly low sugar, which is why I'm only incorporating the banana. Um, if I wanted to, I, though I could add all those different uh, fruit that I had just mentioned, or a squeeze of or crushed orange tastes really nice, or even a little bit of zest tastes really great in there. Um, but I'm just going to keep it simple, frozen avocado, banana, and the greens. And now I'm going to go ahead and blend that up. So, uh, backwards here. So you just basically blend until smooth. I had it on kind of a lower powered setting just because it gets really noisy and I know you guys are sitting there listening. Um, but you're just gonna blend it until smooth. So maybe 45 seconds to a minute, super quick and easy. This will be my uh, lunch slash snack today. But I also wanted to show you these popsicle molds that are also a fun way, as I mentioned. Uh, these are the old fashioned style popsicle molds so you get the grooves in them. I'll bring it closer to the screen so you guys can see them. And um, kind of fun to have, especially if you've got kids in your house, just making popsicles with, you know, you can blend up just yogurt and fresh fruit. You can add the protein, you can layer them. There's tons of different ways and I've got lots of recipes for that. Always on my social media or in my cookbook. And um, I happen to really love them. So you can just Go ahead and add the smoothie into these popsicle molds when you've got leftover. And then what you do is, I'll just do a few here. You're gonna put the lid on without this popsicle stick. Because if you try to put the popsicle stick in now, it's just gonna fall to the side. And then you're gonna pop these in your freezer for probably an hour and let them freeze and then you're going to pull them out and then put popsicle sticks in them and it will hold the sticks better in the center. They need probably five hours or so to freeze and when you're going to uh, want to eat them 
you just run some warm water over the mold and gently pull the popsicle stick out. If you try to pull too hard, the, um, the, the stick will come right out and you'll be left with your popsicle still sitting inside the mold, speaking from experience. So again, there are so many different combinations that you can use to make these popsicles um, and they're just like a fun way to use up some leftover smoothie or to incorporate just more um, veggie, more plant protein into your diet, into your family's diet. Uh, some of the other ways I also wanted to show you that I have incorporated Veggie Day is into cake. Here's a uh, almond flour uh, chocolate sheet cake I made, which is really great for entertaining. Um, and I incorporated the chocolate uh, Veggie Day into this, so you can bake with it, uh, which is completely fine to do that. You can also, uh, like I said, make it into pancakes. So I do blender pancakes with. Uh, banana, oat, egg, and a scoop of protein powder. You can turn those into pancakes, works really well. So there's lots of different um, unique and delicious ways that you can incorporate the protein powder into your day. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. And please uh, send me a DM on Instagram or um, get a hold of anybody at Nutters if you've got questions about Veggie Day and how you can incorporate it into your diet and I look forward to hearing what your favorite flavor is. So thanks for tuning in everybody. Have a great day.